Hello everyone, welcome back to Tutorial Made Simple channel. In this video, we will learn how to create and read in Sklyde encrypted database using Delphi FireMonkey and FireDAC. We use string grid to enter and display the database. The string grid column width is adjusted automatically. We use stylebook component to load custom style. And at the end of the video we will set the font and height of the string grid header. As we know, high-speed strong database encryption is one of Sklyte's unique features. You can impose integrity control on the database file and make the content of the database file confidential. Okay, let's start. Let's create a new multi-device application and select blank application. In this application, we will create two units. First is data module unit and second is main unit. Data module unit is where we put components related with database. Before forgetting, let's save this application first into a new folder. And then save this unit as main unit also save the application. Next, we need to add another unit as a data module. Save this unit. Next, let's add these five FireDAC components. First FireDAC connection, FireDAC mem table, FireDAC table. FireDAX Glide Driver Link and FireDAX Glide Security. Before we continue, it's a good idea to have a look at the Embarcadero documentation regarding this Glide encryption. The link is in the description of this video. We can see here what encryption modes are supported, and also for the record. The encrypted database format is not compatible with other similar Sklyde encryption extensions. This means that you cannot use an encrypted database encrypted with non-FireDAC libraries. So if you have an encrypted database encrypted with non-FireDAC libraries, then you have to decrypt a database with an original tool and then encrypt it with FireDAC. First let's define some constants related to the database. The file name db underscore file name the password for encryption db underscore password the encryption method db underscore encryption and the table name db underscore table we need to define the init database method here this method will be executed once when the application run it will check if the database file already exists or not if not exists then it will create the file and load the default data from the tmem table otherwise it will open the existing database before we write the method Let's check the component's properties that we already had earlier. In the connection we need to set Sklyde in driver ID. In mem table, we will define shopping table structure which has three columns. First is ID, items and quantity. ID is read only and data type auto increment. Items type is string and quantity type is real. Back to our init database procedure. This line sets the database file name and location by combining the documents path. With the db underscore file name constant value, we need to use system IO utils in this unit.
This conditional statement checks if the database file exists. If the file exists, it means the database is already created. So it sets FDSQLIT security 1.database to the existing database file. If the file doesn't exist, it means the database needs to be created. It opens the database connection for connection 1. Open and proceeds to create the table and load default data. The table 1 field F's sign line copies the field definitions from F memorable 1 to table 1. Then table 1 creatable false creates the table structure. And table 1 copy to taste it copies data from F memorable 1 to table 1. After the table and data are created, it sets the encryption settings and encrypts the database using the split security 1 component. Finally, it sets the encryption and password parameters of connection 1, and then opens the connection, opens the table, and frees the fmemptable 1 component. In this section, we will create a simple user interface using string grid to display and entry the data. Okay, let's open our main unit. Before we add the string grid component, let's add stylebook for loading custom style. Delphi Community Edition includes a few custom mobile styles. By default, it can be found in C, Users, Public, Documents, Embarcadero. Now let's open Style Designer. Just double click the style component. The style designer will be open. Open and assign the style for each platform as shown. Don't forget to set the stylebook properties of the form. Next, let's add toolbar component. Shadow component and label component, put them as child of the toolbar component. Then add string grid component and also bind navigator component. The last two component for database are binding list component and bind source DB component. In bind source db component, select and right click then select bind visually. Link the bind source db to string grid and bind navigator as shown.
Now let's create a procedure called Apital. This procedure is triggered when the application is idle, means not actively processing any user input. Then write codes. Ensures that the init database procedure of the data mod instance is called only once during the application's idle time. The form create procedure establishes the connection between the dataset and the data source and sets the onital event handler to trigger the apital procedure. If the if run once variable is false, then it set the if run variable to true and the init database procedure of the data mod instance is executed initializes the database or performs any necessary actions related to database initialization. Form create event handler procedure is executed when the form is created, when the form created. It assigns the app idle procedure to the on idle event of the application. It means that the app idle procedure will be called when the application is idle. The event also assigns the FD table one dataset of the data mod instance to the dataset property of bind source DB1. It establishes a connection between the dataset and the data source component. We already have the database and user interface. Now, let's try to run the application and see how it goes. Oh, we get an access violation error. I forgot to set the data module to be created before the main form. Because the main form requires access to the data module when it is created. Let's fix it. It seems correct now. Let's try again. The target platform is Windows. It's now successfully compiled, but the default data is not there. The error is cannot perform the operation in a closed dataset. I think it because of the mem table was not active. We still got an error, but now the error message is DB is not encrypted. I think due to the first error. It created a non-encrypted database to fix this error. The easy way is change the file name. We can also delete the existing file in the target device. Let's change the file name to something different. Let's run it on Windows platform. Great, it looks good now. In this section we will add a procedure to adjust string grid column widths. The code is originally posted in blog post at Delphi Chops responsive FireMonkey string grid. The link is in the description. I have added a new procedure called calc column widths with a few modifications to fit the string grid in our application. The code is equipped with easy to understand explanations. So of course you won't have any trouble understanding it. Just need to add the procedure to string grid resized event handler to automatically adjust the column when it resized and also added a button for manually resize the string grid column. Now, let's try and see how it works. The platform is still Windows. We can see that the column width is adjusted when the form was resized. We can see that the data also saved properly. Next, let's change to Android as our target platform.
Full source code of this application can be downloaded in GitHub. The link is in the description of this video. In this section, we will add a procedure to change header font of a string grid. I copied this code from an answer in stackoverflow.com. The link is in the source code of this application, which is available for download on GitHub. Please check the link in the description of this video.
That's it for today's video. I hope you found this Android app learning helpful and if you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.